Hi everyone, we are back and we're doing 200 days in 1.20 Minecraft today. In the last 100 days, I challenged myself to complete all of my goals and built up a great starter base to survive and thrive in. So this time I'm setting a few more goals. This time I want to collect all of the armor trims, get full netherite gear, build a village in the valley, and defeat the wither in these 200 days. I can't wait anymore, let's dive right in. Our journey starts today on day 101 and I have just one problem. I had less than a stack of gunpowder and only 15 rockets on my hotbar. Step one in solving that problem was going to be to fly into a cave and start mining up lots and lots, and I mean lots of stone. This is all I did for the majority of day 101 and most of day 102 as well. And with all of the stone, we were gonna be able to make up our first automatic farm in this world, which was going to be a flushing mob farm. I also made a quick stop over to the zombie farm to repair up my tools before starting out on day 103. I started by fortuning up all of that iron I found in the cave while I was mining up stone and got it smelting as I was gonna need a lot of buckets. I also started to craft up all the redstone components I would need like observers, dispensers, redstone torches, repeaters, comparators, all of that stuff too. Before I left to build the farm, I wanted to top up my bread supply so I harvested some of the wheat field, replanted the seeds, and crafted up some bread and then headed out to the build location. I had a small fight with a man with a trident but upon killing him, he did not drop his trident, so I set up a little platform for myself and I started building the farm. This farm was the first thing I wanted to tackle in this world, that way I wouldn't have to worry about mob drops anymore in case I needed them for anything. And here's just a quick combat break with the most awkward water combat you have ever seen in your entire life, but I did get a trident out of this, so I guess that's a plus. And here I am, so happy with my trident. After that, I finished up the mob platforms and it was basically me placing a lot of stone slabs. And I mean a lot of stone slabs, thousands of them. And then at the top, I made a redstone clock with repeaters and a comparator. I don't really know how it works, but I guess it does work. I'll link this farm in the description if any of my Java besties want to build it, but just know it's really, really big and ugly and bulky. I won't build anything over it. And just to continue on the ugly theme, I made this horrible box in the air for my AFK platform, and then I went down to turn on the farm. But to do that, I needed to place water buckets in all the dispensers and remove all the torches off the spawning platforms. Once that was done, the farm was working, and I AFK'd for about 25 minutes. And the mobs are so cute when they're getting a bath. In the late morning of day 108, I left the AFK spot to turn off the farm. And then I checked how much gunpowder was in each chest... And I was actually shocked by how much we got. It was over 10 stacks in just 25 minutes. Then I flew back to the valley, dyed my shulker box red, and then I crafted up a bunch of rockets to put back in that red shulker. After that, I spent the rest of day 108 pretty much just cleaning up all the shulker mess that I had. However, doing this made me realize that my storage room just isn't big enough. But I decided to put that off till another day and work on something else instead. On the morning of day 109, I bred up my bees just because they were cute. And then I picked an area to start terraforming in as I wanted to build a barn for my cows. I wanted both an area for the barn itself, but also an area they could graze in. Once I cleared up enough space in the back, I went through and smoothed out the front as well to make a nice even platform for the barn to stand on. That night, I set off to the mushroom biome as there was another azalea tree there and I wanted to dig up all of that rooted dirt. This lasted a very long time and took me down into the deep slate level of the caves. Eventually I popped down into an open lush cave and I went exploring a little bit as I wanted to find some more spore blossoms. And it seemed like I hit the jackpot as there were so many right where I came in. While I gathered those beautiful flowers, I also found some diamonds, found two different exposed geodes, and I even saw this double spore blossom spawn which I've never seen before. I collected some other bits from the cave as well, like small drip leaf and some hanging roots, and then I decided to go home. The next morning, I crafted up a bunch of things I was going to need for the barn build, and I also gathered everything I had on hand into my shulkers. I shared up some grass outside, and then I started placing my beam blocks for my barn, and I wanted to use strip dark oak as the base for these to switch it up from the crimson logs to make it look a little bit more rustic. I made sure to plan out the grazing area for the cows, and then when I was placing the roof, I wanted it to be rounded, so unfortunately no gradient. Once the structure was up and the roof was on, I started to work on the inside and do some detailing. Now, this was a barn for cows, so it didn't have to be perfect, but I did want it to be pretty in case I had to move through here. 
The next day, I swapped out the grass for a different palette that looked a little bit more like farmland, and it was made out of brown concrete powder, rooted dirt, and coarse dirt. And then on day 113, I worked on detailing the outside of the barn. I added some window treatments, and then I tried to plant a tree for my cow so they'd have some shade, but this one didn't work out. After that, I worked on a water trough area so that the cows would have fresh water. And then I finished out the process by making this little overhang for the cows as they come out of the barn. And of course, adding some life to the area with some grass and some oxeye daisies. The next morning, I gathered up some wheat so I could lure my cows over to their new pen. There were so many comments on the first 100 days video about forgetting about the cows, so we didn't forget them this time. They're here and hopefully they'll be happy here. I did some light terrain work and patched up a few creeper holes around the area and then I harvested all of my sugarcane that had fully grown. I added a spore blossom into the barn for the cows to have some nice particles and then I updated the map of our area to include the barn and it was starting to look so cute all together. The next day I made a little flower patch in between the farm and my base area because I wanted to fill in some of this empty space. And then I headed over to the village because I wanted to get some more protection on my gear. So I figured I could roll some librarians, but after checking a few different houses, I didn't see any villagers. Well, I didn't see any villagers that I hadn't already traded with. I got the sniper duel achievement for the first time ever in one of my Minecraft worlds, which was awesome. And then before I slept to skip the night, I went and harvested all of my melons and pumpkins, which I totally forgot that I had even planted. And then I started gathering up some materials as I was gonna be spending the next four days building up a villager breeder. If I was gonna need any more enchantments or any more emeralds or things that I could get from villagers, it would be worth it to now just take the time and set up a simple breeder that way I could come back and use it later. Then I took some time to build a structure around the breeder and I sort of wanted it to fit in with that whole like medieval farmland kind of vibe. And I grabbed the last two villagers that were still alive in the village without a job that I had saved in their houses in the last 100 days video. Once I had both villagers secured, I worked on the collection area for the baby villagers and then tried to finish up the details and put on a roof, of course. This build was right over near our cow barn, so I wanted it to look kind of like another barn complementing the farmland area, which sounds horrible when you think about the fact that there's villagers in it. And here I was hoping that they would breed, but something was wrong and I kept seeing the thunder, so I was going to have to fix that. I messed around with the bed positioning a little bit, and then I sat there like a little creepy weirdo until I made sure that the villagers had a baby, and this was a little bit unsettling. The baby villager immediately found how to get into the collection system and then I set up access for myself down into an area underneath the villager breeder where I was going to be able to zombify and cure my villagers as well as set their trades and then send them back up to the surface. I covered the entrance of the trapdoor, grabbed this beehive and then headed into the caves as I was going to need a lot of iron for some rails. Luckily for me, I remembered the location of what I suspected to be a big iron vein in the caves from the first 100 days videos, so I set out to grab a bunch of iron from there. On the way out of the cave, I took the opportunity to get some free slime balls from the slime that had spawned, and a final stop in the cave led me to grabbing some redstone ore and some gold ore as we would be needing a lot of power rails for our zombie villager converter as well. There was, however, a reason that I was going to be doing all of this. And that reason was simply that the mobs did a lot of damage to me. I'm playing on hard and they hit hard. So setting up a villager breeder and a converter meant that I would be able to get really cheap book trades, especially protection. And I was gonna need protection for on all of my gear to survive all of the adventures I had planned for this video. Once I got the track fully finished to make sure that the villager collection area would fully work, I started to get the zombie villager conversion chamber all finished as well. The hardest part of setting one of these up is getting a zombie to fall in this hole and then stay inside this little box here with the trap doors. Before I could get a zombie though, I was going to need a name tag with a name on it and of course I decided on the name Smelly. And then I lured a zombie into the hole using a trap door. I closed off the wall behind him without letting him out and then I worked on finishing up the minecart track. That way we could get right into using this thing on day 122. But my first task was going to be making another brewing stand so I ran over to the base, quickly crafted one up and then I enchanted a diamond axe that I made with just efficiency because I had silk touch on my axe. 
Using this new axe, I was able to grab up a lot of brown mushrooms for more potions. And then I pretty much just spent a bunch of time crafting up a bunch of weakness potions so that I could get some more villager trading going. And before we knew it, I had golden apples crafted and we were ready to have some villagers get converted. And this part always makes me feel so bad. But I quickly had two villagers get converted into zombie villagers. That way I could use just one splash potion and I could save a little bit on resources. And after that, I pretty much just stood around and waited for them to cure. After dancing around a little bit on day 123, they finally cured up and then I was ready to start rolling them to try to get protection. But these villagers were quite stubborn, so I had to dig them a little hole and take them out of the minecart so that they would actually trade with me and take a new job. And this process is nobody's favorite thing in Minecraft. It takes forever to try to roll villagers to get the books that you want. However, this guy had Impaling 5, and that reminded me that I had a trident. That little bit of a reminder was actually gonna come in clutch for later because I was going to use my trident to do something important in this world. However, for now, I was just rolling back and forth between these two villagers trying to find any trades that I might want. And this villager ended up having power five for one emerald, which wasn't what I wanted, but I only had power three on my bow. So this was gonna come in very clutch. While I was rolling the other villager, I started getting some more villagers to cure. And then while they were curing, I started to do some light terrain work outside as I wanted to build a village for them. I didn't want to leave my villagers in that hole in the ground. That would be super cruel. And I wanted to build some more structures in the valley. So this would be a perfect project to work on in between adventures. And unfortunately, that was going to mean that I was going to need to cover this awesome hole into the caves, but I was going to leave an entryway down in there that I could put some steps on and make it like a creepy cellar or something. Once I was all done with covering up the hole, it was nighttime and I wanted to torch up my area so way less mobs would be spawning. I didn't want to risk my villagers or have a creeper explosion happen. The villagers were cured on day 124, so I went through and started trading with them and I got efficiency 4 for one emerald. As I already had efficiency 4 on most of my tools, being able to combine these in an anvil to efficiency 5 was going to be amazing. I couldn't help myself from taking a one emerald mending trade. And then I focused all my time into my last villager, trying to roll his trades over and over to find protection. It took so long that I ended up settling on protection 3, which I could combine in an anvil to make protection 4 and then put on my armor. After that, I started leveling up my other librarians with some paper as I didn't have that many more emeralds. This was going to be super useful as librarians can sell so many helpful things like lanterns, glass, and even name tags. I spent some time on day 125 at the zombie spawner gathering XP. I got bored of that pretty quickly though, and when I was re-entering the valley, I saw a skeleton horse. I wanted to try to keep at least one of the skeletons alive to keep as a pet, maybe for a stables, and they were shooting their own horses. It got hectic so fast. But when it was all said and done, I had two skeleton horses remaining, so I leaded them up and took them over to the barn, where they'd have to stay, as for right now, I don't have a stables. I made a quick stop over to the cartographer villager, and that reminded me that I wanted to buy a woodland explorer map, as we were going to be needing to go to a woodland mansion in this video. Before that, though, we were going to grab some more cartographer villagers. And while they were curing, I spent some time chopping oak trees for some apples as I had no more apples left. I started day 126 off by breeding up some cows and I chopped some dark oak trees as they can also drop apples and would be closer to my zombie villagers so I could hear the second round of conversions be done. Once they were ready, I got them in their temporary little homes and then I started trading with them to get their levels up so I could actually get some emerald production going. A good side effect of this was that it's not actually a bad source of XP, so I decided to keep trading with my villagers until I hit level 30, where I could then grab my trident and head into my enchantment room to try to get some decent enchantments on it. And we got Unbreaking 3 and Impaling 5. Something sparked in my memory that reminded me that I think that I had some trident enchantments, but I had to check all of my chiseled bookshelves to find which ones were actually enchanted. I ended up finding Riptide 3, which wasn't what I wanted. I needed loyalty, and I thought I had a loyalty book. And I actually was right. I did have a loyalty three book. I combined my books and then put them on my trident. And now I had a really, really good trident that was gonna be super awesome. Well, once I repaired it, so it wasn't at like four durability anymore. On day 127, I added power five to my bow. Then I went home and I grabbed my pile of doors from last time. And then it was time to fly off towards the ocean monument that I found last time. This new trident was gonna make taking out those guardians way easier than it was with my sword. 
I re-entered the ocean temple just to realize I had actually not been here before and this was a different one. I swam around placing the doors as I needed them and before long I found my first elder guardian. Taking out these things with a trident is amazing, but unfortunately this one didn't drop the armor trim. These trims are pretty rare, but I've already found the rarest one, so I think a 20% chance is still doable. I got pretty unlucky and the second elder still didn't drop the trim. And after I swam around for what felt like an hour with no direction, I finally found the last elder guardian and took him down. But this time I got super lucky as this one dropped the tide armor trim. I spent a while waiting for my mining fatigue to go away so I can mine up some prismarine to duplicate the template. And honestly, I just really love prismarine in general. I feel like it's so underrated. On the way out, I also made a quick stop into the sponge room and grabbed up a bunch of sponge just in case I'd need it in the future. I then moved on to what was gonna be my hardest challenge yet in this world. Woodland mansions are usually something I avoid if I can because they can get so chaotic so fast. But we only needed two more armor trims to have them all. So I guess I was gonna have to face my fears and find it. The first few Vindicators went down pretty easily. In the background I spotted an Evoker, but of course I missed my second shot and it spawned some Vexes. And then another wave of Vexes came so I knew that there was another Evoker nearby. None of that mattered though as I just picked up my first totem and then I had an epic roof battle with some of the Vexes. After a few minutes of non-stop Vexes I went in and tried to kill the Evoker as fast as I could. I heard that there was at least one more in the mansion, which was really stressing me out as I was fighting off Vexes, Vindicators, Evokers, and even regular mobs. I was desperately searching all over the mansion for the last Evoker and I couldn't find him. And along the way, I was being constantly chased by Vexes, Skeletons, Creepers, everything. And at one point I was on fire and I had to bail as I had no water and I was really scared. And just to be safe while I was flying away, I swapped my totem into my offhand and put my shield away. I took a moment to calm down, grab some more water, and then headed back in. This time I was absolutely determined to find the last evoker. It was already the middle of the night on day 128 by the time I found him and killed him. But the nightmare continued as I now had to face the last swarm of vexes that was following me everywhere. Once the vexes were all taken care of, I had the painstaking task of searching every room one by one and trying to find which ones had chests. Now this took quite a while as there's a lot of rooms on those three floors to go through and I was blocking off the ones I've already been to. And when I was in their library stealing their books for lecterns and future decorations, I heard the sounds of some alleys below me so I would have to come back for them later. The few chests that I found at the beginning were so disappointing and there was no armor trim and I was getting kind of nervous, but then I found this cat and I didn't even realize it was a cat at first and then I stood back and I saw Kitty. They have these like farming rooms, so of course I stole all the pumpkins and melons. I found this weird winding staircase that led me to this chest that didn't have the best loot in it. It kind of felt like a waste of time. This last chest I was certain was trapped. I wasn't sure about it, so I put a block here, but I finally found the Vex armor trim after a full day of searching the mansion. And before I left, I said hi to the allies, and I promised them that I would be back at some point. Day 130 was a rather uneventful day where I flew home from the mansion. It took me literally 10 minutes to fly all the way back home, and by the time I got there, it was nighttime. And I was so happy to see the valley once again, and I went to the zombie spawner to repair my elytra and my armor. The next day, I was more determined than ever to finish my armor trim collection, and so I put Unbreaking and Mending on my brush, and I also gave it a new name called Brushy Brushy. And then it was time to set off from the valley once again to discover a trail ruin somewhere, hopefully nearby. I found a taiga that I hadn't yet explored, and wandered around looking for piles of gravel and terracotta. Across this lake, I saw what looked like a village over there, and then when I went to investigate, I found out it actually was a village, and I found this super OP chest. Not far away from the village, I found another trail ruin, so I started to dig it out one layer at a time. Brushing away the suspicious gravel wasn't going that well, and I even broke one because I pressed left click instead of right click, which broke my heart. But we only needed the wayfinder trim, and I was determined to find it. But after a little while of digging and getting some really junky items like some dyes and candles, I finally brushed away the suspicious gravel and found the Wayfinder armor trim. I stayed in the trail ruin for the rest of days 131 and 132, digging out all of the treasures that I had to offer. And even though not every item is the most useful thing I've ever seen coming out of a loot chest or the suspicious gravel, it's still really exciting to find out what you're gonna get each time you brush away the gravel. And the more you brush away, the more you realize how massive these structures actually are. 
and after two full days of excavating this ruin, I had full shulkers of gravel and dirt and treasures and all of these amazing rooms and compartments of this trail ruin to explore. Day 133, I was back at the base and it was time to add all of our new templates to our smithing template barrel. And at this point, I was so proud of myself as we completed our first goal in the first 30 days of this video. After emptying my shulker boxes and sorting everything, I bred my cows. And then I had to go walk my dog. And while I was walking my dog, I don't know, I guess my partner was playing on my computer or something. I don't know what happened, but when I came back, I had a lot of steak. After I was topped up on steak, I went into the nether to fly around and look for another bastion. My armor trim collection was done, but they are all smithing templates. And there was one more smithing template that I didn't actually have. And of course, that was the netherite upgrade template. I spent a while on the outside sniping away at the piglins and the piglin brutes. And when I looted the chest, the loot was actually super disappointing. I spotted another chest as well. And when I looted it, it was just as disappointing as the first two. I walked through the other side, but I quickly realized that there were no more chests here. So it was time to go towards another bastion. I spent most of day 134 flying around the nether, trying to find another bastion. Finding one was gonna be easier said than done though, as some of this terrain was extremely hard to navigate. And I don't know if this is gonna be a controversial statement or not, but I think warped forests are definitely the best nether biome. Eventually, after some more creative maneuvering, I found another bastion. I don't know if anyone else relates, but because I play so much hardcore, I always get so much anxiety when I land in one of these, as I don't want to lose any of my gear or lose my world. But this wasn't hardcore, so I could try to take this a little bit more chill. After shooting a bunch of piglins, I decided to just go for it, and I tried to tower up immediately to make sure that I wouldn't get hit from any of the other piglins around. A lucky shot from one of the crossbows almost knocked me off, and I was so glad that I was holding shift. From my pillar, I shot as many piglins as I could see, and then when I thought they were all gone, I jumped down, towered up a little bit, and looted the chest. And it had a netherite smithing template in it. But as you can see here, I actually missed one of the piglins and my brain turned off for a moment and then I just flew away. I came back though because I had spotted another chest and I was just curious to see what kind of loot it had. And upon opening it, well, I mean, it wasn't the best, it wasn't the worst. On the flight back home, I spotted this ruined nether portal. And it would be just my luck that I found another enchanted golden apple in there. Honestly though, I was kind of sad that this wasn't my hardcore world as I only have one enchanted golden apple there and I just found that pretty recently. I spent the rest of the day navigating towards my portal and then grabbing some netherrack when I did find it so I could duplicate my template before heading out and going to sleep. On the morning of day 136, I spent some time training with my villagers and then I started collecting a bunch of materials as I really wanted to start building some villager houses. So I collected up a bunch of dark oak and cherry wood. And then while I was waiting for more saplings to grow, I removed this awkward little bit of land here in between the barn and the villager breeder. And I built it into a more circular shape that was a little bit more man-made looking so I could be kind of a centerpiece of the village. I surrounded this little garden that I was going to be making with some dark oak logs and then I stripped them all. And then the next morning, I replaced the middle bits with some cherry so that it could have a little bit of a pop of color. After I planted some flowers that were native to the valley, I finished the top trim off with some trapdoors. And then it started raining, so I just went back to chopping up cherry wood. On the morning of day 138, I harvested up all my sugarcane. And then I went down into the caves to mine up some amethyst. And while I was here, I also grabbed some calcite, even though I still had a lot of it. I found some frayed diamonds in the wall. And I stole some more candles from the warden just to use as decoration. While I was going home, I found this huge open cave that I'd never seen before. This thing was massive. I found some more diamonds and another huge geode that I took a bunch of amethyst and amethyst clusters out of. Day 139 started with me bone mealing a bunch of peonies. And then I noticed that there was a bee stuck in my enchanting room somehow. So I let him out and then I flew off towards the desert as I needed to collect a whole bunch of sand for concrete powder. Looting the trail ruin had given me more gravel than I knew what to do with, but I wanted to get some sand, maybe a shulker box or so, so I wouldn't have to come back for a while. After my shulker box was basically full, I flew off in the direction that I thought was home, but actually was not home as I'd never been to this village before. Stopping here would start a journey that was so frustrating. I think it's one of the most frustrating times I've ever had in Minecraft, and that's all due to this guy. At this point though, I didn't know that, so I grabbed some cactus for him. I harvested the only tree that I could find, and I made a boat. And then began the slow process of walking through the desert in the nighttime with a camel, trying to find the ocean. I got pretty lucky with mob spawns not being that ridiculous, but camels get stuck on absolutely everything. And as soon as they get stuck, they just start to lay down and then they take their sweet time getting back up. 
And when I finally found the ocean, I actually saw that there was a village with it and I made the worst mistake of this playthrough so far. I went and got another camel. I didn't even make it out of the village before I realized that one of the camels wasn't tethered to me. It must have gotten stuck on this house and then broke the lead. So I went back, got the camel and then got in the boat and started to do the long journey home. The journey itself was pretty uneventful. And there was a certain calming peace about watching the moon set in the night sky. But that piece would not stay as I finally hit the mainland on day 140. I won't lie, when I was first taking these guys from the desert, I didn't really think about how I would get them into the meadow. And this is my first time ever interacting with camels in game. So honestly, I didn't know how bad their hitboxes were. It took me almost half a day to get like 200 blocks from the shoreline, which just felt so frustrating after a while of having the camels get stuck on the same things over and over again. I started fully playing in the F5 view so I could see when the leads would break. But when I had to play in the first person view, it felt like they always got stuck on something. It took so long that by the time night was falling, I wasn't even to the mountain to get into the valley yet. And even as I was breaking leaves and cutting down trees, they still kept getting stuck. I honestly hadn't anticipated the forest being the hard part. I thought the mountain was going to be the hard part. I finally made it to the snowy layers of the mountains after a few more minutes of struggling. And for the most part, this was going pretty good as I hadn't seen any powdered snow. But I should have realized that I spoke too soon. And as I was going down the mountain on the other side, there was a bunch of powdered snow right where I needed to go. And the camels started to fall into the powdered snow and I was falling into the powdered snow and it was horrible. It was horrific. And I was just in such a panic because I was like, I have already wasted so much time getting these stupid camels here. I was literally taking their leads off and force feeding them cactus, hoping that that would heal their hearts. And I was finally able to make a little waterfall to take the camels down. But of course, something had to go wrong. The lead on the one camel broke and it went into the powdered snow, which I think the powdered snow ate it as I tried to find it and I couldn't. I tried to coax the camel down with some cactus, but of course he fell directly in the powdered snow once again. The only brain cell in my brain told me to grab this other lead, but then for some reason I didn't put it on the camel and I decided to take out my shovel. I ended up accidentally hitting the camel with my shovel when I was trying to mine out the snow. And I realized he would die if I didn't do something soon. So I just put the lead on him and pulled him out. And then as I was sliding down the hill, I contemplated all my life choices. The morning of day 141, I got both of the camels over to the cow sanctuary. And while I was chopping down some more cherry trees, I decided that I was never gonna do anything with camels ever, ever again. On day 142, I started by chopping down some spruce wood. And then I took some cobbled deep slate and I started to lay down some house outlines. I also went through and added a temporary pathway with these path blocks, which I was going to change out in the entire valley as I decided that I really liked the ones that went with the cow farm instead of the ones that I'd done with just the path block. With the temporary pathway in, it was easier to start laying out some extra builds. And I pretty much just spent the entire day and into the night of day 142 figuring all this out. And I took a quick peek around in free cam just to see how it would look from overhead. Then I killed a zombie and prepared myself to start building in the morning. The next day I started with harvesting some bamboo. And then I jumped right into building up our first little house for our villagers in the valley. I wanted all of these houses to somewhat resemble the castle, but to also have their own little flair. And I continued building for many, many days, trying to get a bunch of different places for our villagers to live. And I thought I'd have at least enough resources to do a couple of buildings, but this is the point where I realized that I didn't have any more crimson wood and I had to go into the nether and chop a bunch of it. I was there pretty much the rest of day 144 all the way into day 145. And when I emerged from the nether, it was actually raining in the world, which was really, really annoying. And then I realized while giving a free cam overview to my partner that I couldn't find my camels anywhere. So I had to kill this wandering trader to get some leads. And then I had to go on a search and rescue mission where I had to look all over the valley for these silly camels. And one was over here by the sniffers. The other one was all the way up this mountain and he wouldn't get up. He was so lazy. But once I got them back together, it almost looked like they had a little smooch, which was really cute. And I was kind of less mad. And then I started building up the houses again. And for the first time ever, I've been freehanding all of these houses because I normally build everything in creative first as I have two brain cells and they're fighting each other and fighting to try to keep me alive. And so sometimes I really struggle with being creative on the fly and planning ahead always helps me as a creator. Even though it slowed down my progress, I still had a good time though trying to build something on my own without planning it first. And then I had to stop myself from detailing the village before it was even fully built. So I went to the caves and picked up some more diorite to finish this diagonal little house. And I think personally that roofs are the hardest part of building a Minecraft build, and especially these diagonal roofs. I am not very good at them. 
But all in all, for trying something outside of my comfort zone, I'm pretty happy with how this village was coming out so far. And I kept telling myself to stop detailing, but of course, once I get going, I cannot be stopped. And honestly, it's one of my favorite things is just adding all these little details to all these houses to make them individual and unique for all the different villagers that were going to be living there. I decided to go for a palette swap on this build that we'd already finished. I replaced all the white stones with some cherry planks and some stripped cherry logs and it came out so cute. And then I added some lighting around the area. And while I was building, a wandering trader spawned right in front of me. So I killed him and then I started to tame his llamas as I thought they could be really cute in the village. I got them both on some leads and then I fed them. And I thought it would be really cute to put them in the stables. Maybe there's a family of traders here. I built up the roof to this tiny little house. I figured it could be like a studio apartment. It would probably still cost like $5,000 a month, unfortunately. Then I laid down some more temporary paths to help myself later when I went to replace them all. I started another house over by the barn and the villager breeder. And I figured this could be a simple little house belonging to some farmer villagers. And then when it came to the roof, I decided to switch it up and use some crimson as the trim and then dark oak stairs on the inside. And I thought it looked really, really pretty together. On day 150, I traded out the old garden in the middle of the village for this cherry tree that I grew. And then I added some decorations around it to make it really pretty. I wanted some more petals, but I didn't have a lot of bone meal on me. So I just flew over to the cherry biome that was nearby to grab some. And then after I gathered a bunch that the water had displaced, I went back home. I went back to the tree and I started placing the cherry petals all around it. And then I added some alliums as I didn't have any pink tulips just for a little bit of a similar color. And these next days I'm gonna group together as y'all have already seen me building so much throughout this entire series. I kept on working on the villagers houses until they were all finished. Then I moved on to detailing some of the outside bits. Though I was absolutely far from being done on the outside. Once all the houses were built, I moved on to interiors and moving the villagers in. Some of the villagers, like the farmers and their cartographers, got lumped together in the same building, but I made a special building for my mending villager. Unfortunately, they had to be locked in with some iron doors because zombies on hard mode can break down doors, but I tried to make all their houses as comfy as possible. By the end of this stretch of days, I was doing some path work outside and also doing some terraforming, planting trees, and putting down some outdoor details like wagons and gardens. By day 159, I was getting a little bit tired of building and I wanted to take a break from it. So after I finished up this wagon, I decided to switch it up and focus on duplicating my netherite template. But even after fortuning up the diamonds that I had in reserve, it wasn't enough diamonds to duplicate it enough times that I could make a full set of armor and tools and still have one in reserve. So I had to go back into the caves and start mining. I grabbed a bunch of gold and then some diamonds in the ancient city that I hadn't already grabbed. And then I started strip mining and tried to get lucky, but unfortunately we had mostly gold luck, not diamond luck. But that was okay too, as we were gonna need all this gold to combine with our netherite scrap. The few diamonds I got though, I didn't think were gonna be enough. So I tried to go down a different cave into a different ancient city and I immediately found some more diamonds. I spent some time walking around the city looking for some more. And though I didn't find that many more, I did find a huge iron vein and I took a bunch of iron, including this raw iron block. Then I accidentally set off a shrieker while I was pillaring up to a diamond that I saw in the ceiling. After that, I left the cave and I went and checked on my sniffers. I still wanted to build them a forever home, but that would have to wait as I was going to fortune up all the diamond ore that I had found. And then for some reason, I remembered that I hadn't put efficiency five on my pickaxes yet. So I did that really quickly and I put mending on my fortune pick as well. I fortuned up all that iron that I found. And then I duplicated my netherite template a couple more times. So I'd have enough to have an extra one after I upgraded everything. On day 162, I flew off to the mob farm as I wanted to AFK for some gunpowder for a couple days so that I could go netherite mining. And after two full days of AFKing, I checked the chest and I had a bunch of gunpowder waiting for me. I gathered it up and flew home and then crafted up some TNT with some sand and gunpowder. I spent the rest of the day pretty much rolling a villager to try to get flame for my bow and finally got it for only five emeralds, which was awesome. I needed 17 levels to put flame on my bow though. So then I had to spend the rest of the day trying to gain XP. After trading with my villagers, I finally had enough and then put flame on my bow, which I was so happy with. I spent the next four days in the nether trying to mine for ancient debris. Once I was on the right Y level, I was starting to mine out a tunnel and I even found some ancient debris while I was mining the tunnel. Towards the end of the tunnel, I found another two vein. So I was getting really hyped at this point to find all 40 of the ancient debris that I would need. I lined my tunnel with TNT. And then when I got to the beginning of it, I lit the TNT off and I had the most unsatisfying ever TNT explosion failure sequence. 
just if you're watching it was a visual glitch it was just purely a visual glitch there is no reason to believe that i would mess this up this badly for this long and it is so embarrassing embarrassing or not though i did find some ancient debris there and i continued on mining some more tunnels placing down some more tnt and then lighting it off with a more satisfying explosion this time I did this for about four full in-game days. I went through over six stacks of TNT as I went back and had to craft up more. And at the end, I was purely just strip mining until both of my pickaxes were nearly dead. Here I am mining up the final piece with a almost broken pickaxe. And I was so excited about this. I was so ready to go home. Back at home, I added my ancient debris to the furnace. Then I collected up all my melons and pumpkins so that I could trade with my villagers to start mending my pickaxes. And honestly, it didn't really give me that much XP. So I headed to the zombie farm and I was in a little bit of a silly goofy mood while I was repairing my pickaxes. So I glitched my character under the slab like this. And when I was done, it was already into day 169 and there was a thunderstorm. So I wanted to go upgrade all my stuff really quickly. I crafted up my 10 netherite ingots. Then I put everything together in the smithing table. And oh my goodness, I was so excited to have all of that sweet netherite armor i also upgraded all of my tools including both of my pickaxes my sword my axe shovel and of course my hoe as soon as i was done i had to try on the new fit and show off the full netherite armor with this armor trim i love it and of course that was another goal ticked off of our list but then to protect my villagers i figured i should probably go to sleep day 170 started rather simply with me just farming up my crops I had this adorable moment where this little bunny was coming over and trying to get out a carrot, so I gave him one. Oh, it was so cute. I traded a bit more with my villagers to trade off all those carrots. Then I started talking to the camera as if it was a regular Let's Play episode saying, we only have 30 days left, so I'm gonna take care of another grindy task now. For this task, I brewed up some fire res potions now that I had magma cream. I was gonna take these potions into the nether with me and drink the potions while I was fighting wither skeletons or wither skulls. And by the way, that was my first group of skellies, so I was feeling really good. I drank my potion and then I ran around the fortress looking for more wither skeletons to battle, but I was getting pretty unlucky with spawns, so I figured I might have to go to another fortress. I put on my elytra and I started to look for one that was located in a soul sand valley. I finally found a fortress in the soul sand valley on day 171 and started what I thought was gonna be the very long grind of trying to find two more wither skeleton skulls. My second skull dropped while fighting a big group of skeletons and wither skeletons, which was actually a little bit scary and a little bit hectic for a moment, but I was like, oh my gosh, there's a head there. And the third one came less than a minute later when I was fighting another group of skeletons. Oh my God, I'm so lucky. I'm the luckiest player ever, what? I battled a couple more mobs just to get some extra blaze rods and then I decided that it was time to go home. I didn't want to fight the wither right then and there, so I decided to look around and see what the village needed done. But then I noticed that this camel was just absolutely vibing. Good for him. And after crafting all that TNT, I was a little bit low on sand, so I decided to go back to the desert and collect some more. I made it there on the morning of day 172, and I just collected a bunch of sand for the most of the day. I popped in at the nearby coral reef to take some corals home just in case I wanted them for decorations. And then when I was flying home, I noticed this azalea tree in a dark oak forest, and of course your girl cannot resist some rooted dirt, so of course I mined all of it. Well, I mined until my shulker box and inventory was pretty much full. I flew out of this big opening that I found and then headed home through the night. The next few days I spent at home working on the village. I made the most adorable little fountain in the town square. And I feel like I honestly spent most of my time replacing all of the ground blocks with the palette that we've been using for all of this like trodden land. I also added some little benches here so you could sit near the fountain and worked on a pretty simple streetlight design. And I thought it was cute enough when it was all done so I built some more and even swapped out the lanterns for some glowberries on some of them. Over by the library, I added a little garden area, but I quickly got distracted when some cats spawned and I went to tame them. And personally, I was really loving having all these cats around as they would protect the village from creepers. I had one of the cats laze around on this bench here near the fountain, and then the other one I put in the alley between the librarian houses. And after that was all done, I finished up the garden with flowers that were native to the valley. At the same time, I was trying to refine all the messy details like these flower beds, Looking back on this, I'm not sure why I set up a well near the fountain, but I guess stay hydrated, besties. That's what I was thinking of, hydration. I added stones and grass to the walkway just to give it some extra detail. 
And after that, I worked on the stables that I had laid out earlier. I had this idea that the cartographers are the only ones in town who want to keep their grass and keep people off their grass. And that's why they have these like big windows, not to see the world, but just to see what's going on outside. I also planted some trees on the way to the village to help hide the sight lines from the castle. And these just help to play with sight lines and I'm not that good at custom trees, so regular trees it is. Day 179 was once again a wood chopping day as I was running low on a little bit of cherry and crimson wood. When I got back from the nether it was already nighttime, so I decided to go over and work on a sniffer pen behind the mending villager's house. I tried to match the sniffer pen to the village so that way it could look like they were brought to the village to be taken care of. By the morning of day 180 I was done with the wall and I moved on to working on the interior part of the pen. I smoothed out some of those rough edges and then I went through and I added mossy spots for the sniffers to enjoy. I wanted to move a couple of the sniffers over to see if I needed to make it any bigger before I moved them all. And this sniffer seemed to love the village and just had the best time walking around through it. However, disaster struck when I didn't hear this creeper. And then I just sat there on the pause screen for a really, really long time. Eventually I composed myself and went to sleep and then I brought the sniffers over to their new pen without any more incidents. And once they were all safely contained, I started adding some details to the top of the pen on the part with the logs. By the time that was all finished, I sorted my inventory and then I got back to placing the dirt pathway. That's pretty much all I've done this episode. However, I think the end result is pretty worth it, so I don't really mind doing it. I also decided to make the village walkable by adding these spruce slabs. And I figured while I was adding them, I would just add them all over the valley where they were needed. And I'm just going to skip through most of day 182. As you can see here, it was mostly placing more dirt down again. And then to cut this off from the rest of the village a little bit, I wanted to make a wall here and I made it out of calcite, diorite, and stripped crimson wood. I added some lanterns and some cherry slabs. And then I removed this archway so that I could connect it to the wall and it would look a little bit more natural and like it was meant to be there. And when it was finished, I was much, much happier with it. The next day I added some foliage to the area. Then I wasted like an entire stack of bone meal on this tree sapling trying to grow a tree for my sniffers and when it finally grew it was the worst tree literally ever. And then for the rest of day 183 and all of day 184 I basically just replaced pathways which I'm not going to show you as I've already done this so much in this video. However that night I took a little look around the village with some shaders on and I just was so blown away by how beautiful this place is at night. And then the next day I went around adding some extra lighting to the village with some shroom lights and brown carpet. And then I did another little shaders walkthrough of the village during the daytime. This time of day is my favorite time in Minecraft, like that golden hour. And it was just so beautiful. I loved it so much. And then as I felt like I was in a good place with the village, I spent the rest of my day brewing up some potions because, well, there was only one thing left on the list and that was to kill the wither. And on day 186, I made a staircase down in my mines to the bottom of the world. Even though I wasn't in hardcore this time, I still want to do my strat of digging a very long tunnel as this is pretty much the only way I've ever fought the wither. And then at the end, I made a little summoning box. I placed down all my soul sand and then it was wither time. I drank my strength potion right away. And when he was ready to be damaged, I was ready too with my bow, but he kept kind of getting stuck in the ceiling. So whenever I saw his tail, I made sure to shoot it. When he was at half health, I took out my sword and I finished him and it went super fast. I always feel like he has more HP than he has. I grabbed another star and then I did see that there were some diamonds in the cave. So I went to go get those as well. And I noticed even more on the way out. Thanks for helping me find these, Mr. Weather. Appreciate it. Back at my mess of a storage room, I crafted up my beacon. However, I now had a new problem as I only had 20 blocks of iron. So I didn't have enough to make a full beacon. So I did what any sensible Minecraft player would do and I went mining. I found a super big mine shaft and I started to explore and take all the iron that I could find. This became a pattern over the next few days from day 187 to 190 where I would just mine up all the iron that I could find in the caves. And then I would stack it up outside my base area and use my fortune 3 pickaxe to hopefully mine up enough iron for the beacon. However, after my first big haul, I realized that I probably wasn't going to have enough from one time. And then I remembered that nearby there was a stony peaks biome where I mined up a bunch of calcite last time and I went there to grab all of the iron once again. I stopped at as many of the surface deposits of the iron ore as I could find. And I only finally called it quits and stopped mining iron once my inventory was pretty much full of iron ore. 
I built a huge flex pile that was so high up in the air and I could see everything I built in the valley. But then once again, it was time to fortune three all of that iron. After several in-game minutes, I had a stack of raw iron blocks and I knew that this would be enough to finish my beacon. The morning of day 191, I was checking our lava supply and we didn't have a lot. So I headed into the nether to grab some more. And the pattern that the lava was making when it was like running was hurting my brain. So I went back and then I saw a bee dancing and I put all of my stacks of iron to smelt. I waited through the whole night, switching out lava buckets and adding more iron as needed. And I was so bored on day 192, just waiting for it to be fully done. But finally, after some long minutes, I was able to get the rest of the iron that I needed to make the final iron blocks. And then I grabbed all my blocks and I started to set up my beacon. However, it felt like something was kind of off. And then when I got to the third tier of the beacon, I realized, yeah, definitely something is off. So then I had to tear the entire beacon down. Honestly, that was kind of embarrassing. But the next time that I set it up, it was all correct. And at the end, we had our full beacon. I put some haste two on it and then I added a pink glass pane. And there we were less than 200 days into this world with a full beacon. The following days, 193 and 194 were spent cleaning up the valley. I chopped down my first mangrove tree, cleaned up all my messy spruce trees, and that includes this giant one right here, by the way, and removed my mini cherry forest that I planted while I was building the village. I also forced myself to clean up my chest monsters. Well, sort of. What I did was basically move all of my stuff into my courtyard and then next time, if we do 300 days in this world, I would be more inspired to clean it all up. On day 195, I realized that I was missing a way to recycle all these seeds and crops and saplings. So I built up a bone meal machine. Even though I don't technically need it, it's a nice way to recycle, especially for the extra 1000 cherry saplings I have laying around. I took a look at the updated map and I asked Stinky what they thought of it, but they kind of just looked away. Actually, no, I think that they loved it. Indeed, I did not bribe them at all with a piece of wheat. The rest of the day was a pretty chill one where I farmed up my crops and I traded with my villagers. Day 196, I once again flew out of the valley and headed to the mom farm. And there I spent the next several days preparing for if we were ever going to do a 300 days in Minecraft. Because I desperately needed more gunpowder again. I packed up everything that I could fit in my shulker box. Then it was time to head home. The rest of the day I spent walking around the village and being really proud of myself for all that I've accomplished. I also said bye to my skeleton horses, but they didn't really want to talk to me. And then I said bye to my llamas, but they also didn't want to talk to me. And I don't care about the camel, but he didn't even look at me. So I guess no one here wants to talk to me. I brought up the cows one more time and I gave that bunny who's been trapped here a golden carrot. And then I grabbed my efficiency four books that I forgot to put on my hoe and my shovel. And I took them home to max out my tools. A wandering trader spawned, so I decided to check out what he had, and he had some pink tulips and some sea pickles, and I bought the ferns as well. Then I planted all the new foliage that I got from the wandering trader in the village. And then it was basically nighttime, and our time in this world was coming to an end for now. So I headed to sleep one last time. And here we are, day 200! We did it! We did so much in this video, from completing our armor gym collection, to building up this village, to getting full netherite everything, and even getting a full beacon. Make sure you subscribe if you liked the video. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!